Bulletproof Radio, a state of high performance. Your favorite way to decalcify the Pinot. By the way, if you're listening to this going, what the heck's he talking about? Everything he's talking about, there's substantial groups of people who are saying this is going on. There's also substantial groups of people saying this is all uh, a bunch of woo. Uh, the truth is usually in the middle <laughs> from, from what I've seen. <laughs> but yeah. what uh, what have you found works to make your yeah. pineal gland work, and and how do you know it's working? I you know my favorite substance probably if I had to pick one thing would be iodine as far as the its, its ability to uh, decalcify the pineal gland because it is the halogen you know you have the fluoride bromine chloride and iodine and a good form of iodine is what I've found. Uh, has the ability to decalcify the pineal gland. And not only that, every cell in the body requires iodine. And uh, it's, uh, that's Do you like Lugol's or do you use it topically? Do you take it orally? How much do you take? Yeah, so uh, I actually developed a nascent iodine, uh, which is in a certified organic glycerin base. And it was the first certified organic iodine product on the market. However, Lugol's, I love Lugol's. I just didn't want the, I wanted to kind of, increase and come up with my own innovation uh, in iodine or with iodine. So, and I, I think that, and Dr. Brownstein, who's a friend of mine, who's been doing, you know, massive amounts of studies on thyroid and endocrine dysfunction. Yeah, big, big name in that field, right? Uh, in iodine. He, uh, him and I both agree that about 25 milligrams a day is really, really good for anybody. And that's 25,000 micrograms. So I know that sounds like a lot, but, uh, uh, anybody who's suffering from endocrine disruption. And now we know that iodine can start uh, pulling out mercury, lead, cadmium, strontium from the body. We also know how have anecdotal evidence now from people that suffer from hypersen EMF hypersensitivity syndrome that have tried everything out there and they're getting the best results with uh, taking iodine. Now that dose of iodine is is larger than I've seen from almost anyone. The The largest dose that I've seen recommended is something like 14 or 18 milligrams uh, from some of the books on adrenal fatigue and, and problems. But people with Hashimoto's are usually told, don't take any iodine, it might make your Hashimoto's worse. What's your take on that? Uh, my take is they're uh, not getting the proper iodine testing done. Uh, Dr. Brownstein and Dr. Guy Abraham are the ones that developed the only iodine loading loading test. And there's only one uh, facility, I think, now in the United States that does that testing. If people go in and get blood iodine testing, it's not, it's not accurate. Uh, what I think is, and what we've seen, is that when you start taking iodine, your body's going to start pulling out all the brominated compounds and the fluoride, and it can take up to six months to a year before your, iodine, your thyroid levels come back to normal. And what you usually see is you see if, if the individual is going into the doctor, their endocrinologist, and getting uh, all of their iodine precursors and all their uh, T3, T4, and, and, and TSH and all that, you usually see it go in a cycle like this. So and that's the reason why the endocrinologists say, oh, get off the iodine, get off the iodine, because you're going to have uh, Hashimoto's, you're going to have hyper, then you're going to have hypo, and it's just going to cycle itself until all of those toxic halogens are out of the system and your body's able to repair itself again. But just like with fibrocystic uh, PCOS and fibrocystic breasts and anything reproductive, I mean, that's just a a telltale sign of severe iodine deficiency. And mental retardation in children, I mean, it's uh, you could pretty much link iodine deficiency to every single uh, health condition.